guys, just wanted to walk y'all through building a breadboard power supply, kind of like this, so you can use on your projects. You'll need some components, uh, breadboard, you can use a 400 or an 830 count, it doesn't matter. Use a small one so I can move it around a little bit. You need an LED, a 4001 diode, 1K ohm resistor, 5 volt regulator, 7805 or 7806, you can use either one with this. 10 microfarad capacitor, two of those, a switch, and some wires and jumpers. First thing I do whenever I build these things is I'll lay it out, kind of get my lines down that I'm going to use. It helps me reference stuff, so I just trim these up, bend them in, put them in the breadboard so that I can uh, get a good reference of where stuff's going to set. And I usually ground. I'll, I'll run the ground across the other side this way kind of just mark okay this is everything on this side is my power supply it kind of helps me make sure I don't get into any of this circuitry whenever I'm working on something so I just put this 7805 in here and uh, I'm going to run the ground to the center pole on the 7805 that's the ground lead and I'll just continue on like this now the the third lead on the 7805 or 7806 is uh, is uh, the output so I'll run that down to my power uh, the bottom rail there now I'll add a switch you don't have to use a switch I like to it just makes things easier you just you can do this with a jumper just as easy to turn it off and on but I kind of like using a switch it just makes it easier this is kind of what we have here on the switch. All it does is just takes the power we're going to run in from a diode here in a little bit and just runs it down to the switch. And whenever I click that switch, it provides the power to pin one on the 7805. Now I'm going to add a, a 1K ohm resistor. And I trim these down. I don't like this stuff standing so proud on these uh, breadboards, especially if it's something I'm going to leave there. Uh, you know, this is a cheap circuit, so it's no big deal. Uh, LEDs are pretty cheap. You can kind of see that goes to the pin 3, or the leg number 3 on the 7805. Scoots over a row. This LED, cathode, anode. There's a flat spot shows the negative, and, and I cut these off too, so I depend on these flat spots a lot to tell me which one is the negative lead. And I'll bend these into shape so it'll sit flat. I like everything to sit flat on here to just kind of keep it out of the way. Otherwise, dragging stuff across there will pop stuff off my, my breadboard. So I get the LED set in there and get my uh, cathode set in the negative rail. And then run my anode up to meet the resistor in that uh, row on the breadboard. And then the resistor, of course, goes to pin 3 on the uh, 7805. That's a diode. Uh... And I'll trim these up the same way, just kind of get them to set low. Uh, you want to take notice too, these have a polarity. You want to make sure that this uh, is in line so that your your uh, power goes through and, and doesn't get stopped. So you can kind of see where I'm setting this in here and the line's kind of going down. It's uh, uh, In other videos I've called this a wall. It's not a wall, but it just... If you just look at it, it just kind of tells you, hey, if you're trying to run power in this side, this wall is going to stop it. So, anyway, that's uh, that's the cathode. So, I'll just plug this into the positive rail on the top side, or on the top rail. And then that powers down to the switch. And then whenever I click the switch on, then it delivers the power from this uh, rail into the switch, into the 7805 and out. This is an uh, electrolytic capacitor, and these also have a polarity, and you'll want to take note of this. Uh, like I said before, the, the center rail on a 7805 or 7806 is, is negative, so when you put these uh, capacitors in, you'll put both of the negative leads into the center uh, pole. So. Your positives, one goes to the outside, one goes to the, the ins, or the uh, one goes to the left, and one goes to the right. And then your negatives both sit together in the center. 
and you can use different capacitors for this. I'm actually using a little bit large capacitor on on the, the uh, outside here, but uh, it's okay. These are the parts I have, and they work. Let's plug it in a nine volt battery. You can uh, again, you can plug any any DC power into the provider rail, and I call this rail that's on the top the provider rail, the one that uh, is connected to the the diode, but up to I think these 7805, 7806s can handle up to maybe I don't know 25, 30 volts. I wouldn't push it too hard, but uh, if you have like a 20 volt power supply, you could plug your positive, negative, as long as it's DC in there. And here I'm just I'm showing that uh, I'm getting like 8 point something volts out of this 9 volt. It must be. A, a little bit used or something but so now I plug this into the provider rail so now I have a top rail that's giving me 9 volts and then the bottom rail which uh, is a circuit we just built is going to be uh, 5 volts so what I'm doing here is plugging in a couple of leads to show the bottom rail now is uh, providing 5 volts or I believe this is just a little bit short it's like 4.9 yeah so top rails 9 volts, bottom rails 5 volts. Now here what I'm doing is uh, just just to be able to show uh, pulling out the 7805. I'm going to drop in a 7806. It's very easily done. And if you wanted to, you know, drop off the 7806 with another circuit, run it right over to a 7805, then uh, you could actually uh, set up a dual you know, seven or a five volt and a six volt on the same type of circuit here. So you can see that's uh, 5.9. And if you do use a bigger DC, uh, like for your provider rail, if you're going to put in five volt or tw 20 volts or 20, you know, you might want to use one of these heat sinks. They do really help. Uh, you can get these things on eBay pretty cheap. So now you have your circuit built. All you have to do here is uh, now just run your your five volt rail, power another uh, breadboard. Just plug it into the provider rail on another breadboard and turn your your uh, new circuit on, and and away it goes. And this works well. Um, I have a few of these that I built. On some of the stuff, I'll build them permanent. You know, like on my programming boards, and like this board doesn't have any power. It's not meant to. It's usually done by, with a control unit. Another thing I do is uh, I'll take a couple of these smaller boards and I'll put them together like this. So that's how a 5 volt, 6 volt uh, breadboard power supply works. It uh, comes together just like this. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.